from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about Lloyd Cushenberry. And, and Lloyd Cushenberry had started out the season a little rough. Will we, will we find common ground on that? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would say that it's not been what you need out of a starting rookie center. He has performed admirably at times, but honestly, he's been a liability at times. But there have been encouraging signs. He's improved every game. And we knew to start the year there might be a little bit of speed bump there, right? Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay, so one of the things that I, I wanted to see, and I think there's a little bit of an eye test that we can see the improvement, but actually Pro Football Focus did a little bit deeper dive into his numbers mm -hmm. and about where the improvements are, act, are at. He's leveled off on his consistency as it relates to pressures and hurries. Mm -hmm. like, like the lowest he's hit this season was the last against the Chargers. Right. This last game against the Chargers were the lowest amount of pressures and hurries he had. And he's leveled off to two per game over the last three. So it's not so much that he had a great game against the Chargers because once in a while, a guy's just going to have a great game. Right. It's that he's done three straight games only giving up two per game. Where earlier in the year, six, four, like he had, uh, I think, a five in there. Like he, he had just significant amount of pressures he was giving up. He was getting his quarterbacks, because, again, the Broncos have had three now. He's getting his quarterbacks in a bad way, in a bad situation because of his play. But because he's leveled off, you sort of wonder at this point, is this the trajectory of the trend or is this just because of the opponents they had? Because remember, the last three opponents also, with maybe the exception of Kansas City, were all kind of teams that are struggling in their own different ways. Well, and the other part of this is, do the, do those opponents have good uh, pressure up the middle guys? Mm -hmm. You go back and check. The, the Patriots, not so much this year, really, to be honest with you. Kansas City really hadn't had a lot of, and with Chris Jones out, you know, they, they didn't really have a lot of pressure up the middle on that. Um, the, the Chargers are an outside rush team. They're outside backers, and, and then Bosa and Ingram on the outside are good. Tillery's been okay, but real, really they haven't had much, uh, haven't had great success up the middle with their, uh, Grady Jarrett might be a different story. You know, at the Atlanta Falcons, he's kind of a monster. Grady Jarrett might be a different story. So I, I think if you're, uh, if you're the person who's caping for Lloyd Cushenberry, he's gotten it. I think the next game's a litmus test. I think I think the Falcons game is a litmus test for that because Grady Jarrett's a monster in the middle there, and he's gonna there are gonna be times where Lloyd's gonna have to take him on one on one. Do you think that this will ultimately even things out along the offensive line? I guess what I'm asking here is. What does it ultimately mean for the rest of the offensive line if Lloyd Cushenberry starts playing more consistent? I think it means you can do more things. You don't have to do as much combo blocking. Uh, or if you do, you can change the way that you do that blocking. Um, I think it, it, it will ultimately allow Drew Locke to be more comfortable with a pocket developing around him if he's not feeling a gap pressure put in the center in his lap and having to get uh, skittish and move around. So I, I think there's a chain effect that comes off of that. Uh, if Drew Locke has the confidence that the protection in front of him is going to hold up and that the tackles are going to push the guys out to the arc on the edge, uh, that's going to give him the ability to get set and get, and get his body right, his mechanics right, and throwing the ball instead of falling off on that back foot. So, like I said, there's, there's probably a chain reaction there. He's given up one sack in the last four games. But, again, not a lot of, not a lot of great players. The Jets probably are the toughest test, I think, for him uh, in terms of uh, recent games. Because they have some pretty good defensive tackles. The rest of those teams don't really have a whole, a whole lot to offer up the middle. It was actually against Kansas City that he ended up doing that. But it seemed like kind of for him, the, the low point, at least uh, according to the numbers here, was really the Pittsburgh game. The Pittsburgh game, since then, he has improved steadily across the board from that moment. Now, he had a couple of struggles against Tampa Bay. We saw well, those. Well, but, I mean, you get Vita Vea and, and, and Dominica Sue in that game, yeah, you know? And then the Jets game, you mentioned, uh, he gave up four pressures, yeah. three hurries, one hit, they're, they're, but they're, no sacks. Their tackles are good, though. Yes. I mean, the, the Jets, for as bad as they are, their, ta their D tackles are actually pretty good. Uh, so that's that's to be expected. But then you start getting into the schedule after that where you got uh, New England, Kansas City. You know, you got a bunch of teams that don't really have a lot to offer at the defensive tackle position. Now, Kansas City does when Jones is healthy, but, you know, obviously wasn't. So, you, you know, and then Tillery, like I said, with the Chargers, he's decent, but um, he's not as good as some of those other players. I just feel like oftentimes we have conversations about the young players on the offense, and we frame this as, well, what, what a great experience for K.J. Hamler and for Jerry Judy, and what a great experience for Drew Locke because this is an opportunity to see him what about for Lloyd Cushenberry? I mean, think about what this season is going to mean for him and his seasoning mm -hmm. and what he's going to be able to, to build on for next year and, and beyond. 
I mean, th this is exactly the trial by fire that you probably don't get a true test of in the preseason. Yeah, you get some snaps, but you're playing against third stringers, right? Maybe wh whoever he ends up playing against, right. maybe there's a little bit of starter work in there in the preseason. It snaps. Consistency can be built off that, but you're not playing against top-level talent. He walked into the team earned the starting center job and immediately went out there and had to face the Tennessee Titans. Like that's the, Hey, congratulations, Rook. You're getting to face three of the best defenses in the league to start off the season. And Oh, by the way, a, a quarterback in drew lock that is, you know, obviously still pretty green, still learning his way. Jeff Driscoll, who's going to hold the ball too long. And, and then you're going to also eventually get Brett Rippon out there. So the, the mix of quarterbacks, I, I, at this point, I'm over the moon about what Lloyd Cushenberry has done so far this season. And I'm would, not even grading on I'm not even grading on a curve either. Oh, see, I, I would think that if you're saying that you kind of are a little bit. Um, because that's not if it were Connor McGovern out there, would you be satisfied with that performance? So Connor far? McGovern has not, not had a good year. If it were Matt Paradis, would you be satisfied with that performance? No, because he's a so he's then you are grading a vet. on a curve. But I mean, no, I'm, you're I'm giving him slack because okay, he's a rookie. Okay, fine. I'm giving, uh, but I'm not, no, I'm not giving him slack. I'm saying his number, his number support that he should be playing. Look, I mean, he had his highest graded game. Well, uh, other than against Tennessee, he had his highest graded game against the Chargers here. Like I said, steady improvement. I, and I, I've been, I, I agree with you there. It has been steady improvement. I think it's been improvement week to week. I think that uh, if you're going to give him a grade, like a letter grade so far for the year, it's probably C plus. He's performed above average or average with with uh, some slight perks because the trend has been in the upward direction. But I'm not, I'm, you know, as far as over the moon, I think that would be, to me, that would be hyperbole. I, I think that he's been serviceable. I think he shows signs of being the guy. And as long as he continues to improve game to game, will eventually be the guy. I mean, he's kind of the guy right now because he's starting, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, there is an eye on, is that something we're going to have to shore up or not? Okay, let and me, eventually that will leave the conversation. Let me reframe it then. I'll, I'll say I'm, I'm over the moon based on the obstacles that this offense has naturally created for itself. The youth, the short amount of time to get ready for the season, mm -hmm. the new offensive coordinator, the cycling of quarterbacks back there. So yeah, maybe I'm grading on a, on a slight curve, but I'll, I'll say it as based on all of those things, he could have stayed the course on the four to six pressures per game. And we'd be sitting here going, man, it's, it's been all right. He's hanging in there, but it, it no, hasn't been good. If he was good. giving a four to six a game, I'd be lobbying for Schlopman. Okay, but that, that's fine. But I'm saying, like, but he, he legitimately could have. I think we're coming at this from different angles, but saying the same thing. I think we're both, I think the word would be satisfied with his performance to date. I think that there, I would like to see this continued improvement play out. Obviously, you would too. But I, I think you're saying you've seen enough to where you're excited. I am. And I'm saying I'm still skeptical. Let me see it a couple more times. And I, I think, but I think we're both on the same track. I'm just, you're, you're, you're up in the front cabin and, and I'm sitting in the, in the middle of the train. What was the time to throw for Drew Locke against the Chargers and how can they build off it? We'll get to that next.